In this short video, I'll be showing you how to export a flight plan from Plan G into X-Plane 530 GPS in Simulator. For the most part, the X-Plane 530 works exactly how its equivalent, the Garmin 530, works in the real world. This video assumes you already have knowledge on how Plan G works, how to create a flight plan, and basic operation of the aircraft. This video is applicable to the default Baron 58, the Cessna Skyhawk, the King Air C90, the Sikorsky S76C, and any other aircraft that uses the default 530 or some variation of it. So let's start in Plan G. This is a modified version of Plan G configured to work with X-Plane 11. To date, there's no official version of Plan G that works with X-Plane 11, and a few of the Plan G features don't work properly. If there's enough demand, I'll make of another video of that aspect of Plan G. But for now, there's a link in the video description on how to get the modified XE. The first step is to obviously load up your flight plan. By default, Plan G saves its flight plans as PLG files, and typically they're in your Documents Plan G files. I've loaded my flight plan from one of my previous videos where we flew from CYQG, Windsor, to CYXU, London. The route isn't important, but it serves as a demonstration for this video. Having an airport as your start point and destination is somewhat important, as the GPS will use your departure airport, in this case CYQG, Windsor, and your arrival airport, in this case CYXU London, as the departure and the arrival in your GPS. From there you can set things like departure SID, transitions, and stars. The route, in this case what I have selected here, can be a combination of fixes, NDBs, VORs, and intersections, so long as those waypoints also exist in X-Plane 11. So basically, as long as you built your database in Plan G using X-Plane 11, you should be okay. The cruising altitude, found by clicking the altitude button, here 3500 feet, and specific waypoint passing altitudes, shown here, over to the right of the plan file, won't make a difference in the Garmin 530. The GPS will not follow your predefined altitude settings in your route, you'll need to set the altitude manually using your autopilot. Once you're happy with your route, it's time to export it as an FMS file. So click File, Export and choose X-Plane 910 FMS Flight Plan. Now you'll want to browse to your X-Plane folder. If you're using Steam, like I am, that's going to be Steam Apps, Common, X-Plane 11, and open up the Output Directory. And now open up the FMS Plans Directory. This is the directory that the Garmin 530 automatically scans to find what flight plans it should load into the simulator. Now that we have exported the flight plan, we can switch to the simulator. When starting up the flight in the simulator, ensure that your starting airport is the same as the starting airport in your flight plan. Start the aircraft as normal, so that your avionics power is on. It's also helpful to have the engine running, so you don't drain the battery while programming your GPS. By default, the GPS will be sitting on the first page of the nav view, like you see here. I'm just going to open up my GPS into the 2BD window, so it's a little easier to see. Click the flight plan button. You'll now see a page similar to the one in the video. For me, my starting airport is CYQG, so you should see that as the first waypoint. Currently our flight plan is empty, so we need to load the flight plan we exported with Plan G. Turn the inner bottom right knob on the GPS to change to the second page. This is the flight plan catalog. If the export was done correctly, you should see your flight plan at the top of the list. Push in the right knob on the GPS to activate the cursor. Hit the Enter key to load the flight plan into the GPS. The GPS will automatically switch to the first page of the nav view, like before. If we click on the flight plan button again, we can see that our flight plan is loaded. And you'll also notice that our departure and arrival airport is loaded at the top of the flight plan. It's sometimes useful to skip the first waypoint and make the second waypoint, in this case YQG, the active leg. So to do that, we push the right knob again to activate the cursor, rotate the outer knob, push the menu key, and hit enter to activate the leg. And push the cursor again to deactivate the cursor. As you can see now, YQG is the active leg of the circuit. If at any time you rotate the inner knob by mistake, just hit the clear button to go back to the flight plan. 
So I hope that gave you a good understanding of how to export a flight plan from Plan G and import it into X-Plane 11. Of course, if there's any comments, questions, or concerns, or suggestions, feel free to throw them in the comments below. Happy flying!